Welcome to the homestead. Today I'm gonna to be making mozzarella cheese. I hope you stick around and watch. To start off, I just wanna show you that this is raw milk. This actually came from our neighbor and we purchased from her since our cow is not yet in milk. Um, but I wanna show you that you can definitely see there's a lot of cream on top and I always skim the cream when making cheese because the cream doesn't really end up in your cheese. When you skim the, when you drain the whey, the, the cream ends up with the whey and so you're gonna be putting that down your drain. You really don't wanna get rid of your cream that way. So I always skim at least as much as I can easily and by easily I just mean pour. <laughs> I just pour a little bit of it off until I can see that until I can see that I'm pouring milk rather than cream. There's a little bit more. Okay, so I've gotten most of the cream. So then what I'm gonna do is just shake it up. I already have the majority of milk in here that I'm going to use already. This pot holds two gallons. So I'm just going to top it off a little bit. So that I have two gallons. Now, if you are making mozzarella for the first time, I suggest that you only use one gallon of milk. Um, this is probably, I want to say, I think I've made it at least 10 times now. Um, but the first few times I made it, I only made it with one gallon because it didn't turn out as good as I had wanted. We still ate it and enjoyed it, but, well, Zach enjoyed it. <laughs> but um, let's start with one gallon. It, it takes a little bit of practice. Don't expect to be perfect the first time. Okay, so now I've got two gallons in my pot. I have my little cheese thermometer here. Uh, really, any thermometer will do as long as it reads around 100 degrees. 100 to 200 degrees is the temperature range that you're going to be needing it at. Um, to start out, though, before I cook it, um, I am going to put in my citric acid. It's just a uh, comes in a powder, and you should be able to find this in most stores. For two gallons of milk, I use three teaspoons. Of course, if you are doing one gallon of milk, which I recommend, use one and a half teaspoons. So I just top that off with a little bit of water. Got water from my Berkey there. And just stir it around. It's gonna dissolve. Okay, that's pretty good. So this, just pour it in directly in your milk. So at this point, we have milk and citric acid, and it's gonna go on the stove. Now, usually when I'm doing this, I'm doing something else. I've gotten to the point now where I can do something else because I know what I'm doing. Um, I'm not, don't really watch my pot a hundred percent but if I will put it on low I can just build up the heat very slowly and usually I'm doing dishes or I'm homeschooling or something else but um, for the purpose of this video I'll turn it up just slightly just because I'm here to watch it the point of this right now is to heat it up to 100 degrees 100 degrees tends to be like this magic number, I guess. Um, and at 100 degrees, you'll be able to put in your rennet, and that will make magic. Like, it's amazing to me. I still wonder how in the world, but um, you'll see when it comes. But 
you stir it every now and then, you don't want it to stick, and you want to raise it to 100 degrees. Okay, I'm almost at temperature, so I've got a couple more degrees to go, and then I am going to add my rennet, which is, I think, the most fun part. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it off, and we will talk about how to add the rennet. Okay, so same process you did for the citric acid, but this time you are going to use whatever your rennet specifies. Um, I think some rennet is more concentrated than others. For this one, it says half a teaspoon per two gallons. Uh, so some of the rennet I've had before said half a teaspoon for one gallon. So you wanna make sure you look at your label and see what it says. Whatever it says is the amount, of course, you need to use. And then you're going to add it with a little bit of water. That's why I'm putting it in this dish. Um, like I said, same thing as you did with the citric acid. You're just gonna put a little bit of water in, mix it around. Now, a lot of directions will specify a quarter cup or half a cup or third, I don't measure like that. So that looks like about a quarter cup to me. Okay, so I have turned off my milk. Now, I'm not sure how necessary this little tool is. You could probably do it with a slotted spoon. However, um, this is specifically, this shape um, is specifically for making cheese, and you'll see why. Um, they recommend, the recipe I was following recommended that you pour it into your spoon so that it sifts down, and then you can incorporate it throughout your milk just a few times around making sure it's mixed and pull your spoon out. So stick your lid on, now you're gonna wait for 10 minutes and when you get back, <laughs> the magic will have happened, which I think is really amazing. Okay, so get ready to see what the run it does. So if I press my finger on here, you can see that it pulls away from the side and you can already, you can see the way so some recipes will call for cutting the cheese, but you know, I don't think it's necessary and it just takes more time and I'm all about saving time. So what I'm gonna do is just use my little handy dandy little slotted spoon thing and just stir it around a little bit. You're gonna put the heat under it again and bring it up 10 more degrees which shouldn't take too long because you should still be at around 100 degrees. And so you want to bring it to 110. So while I'm doing that, I just want to review just a little bit because when I'm watching a video or reading instructions or something, I just need to break it down in my head to like to the simplest steps possible. Um, so really all this is is milk and citric acid, heat to 100 degrees, rennet, and then you're heating to 110 degrees after that. So, I mean, it's pretty simple. Not like some of these other, there's a lot of recipes I've seen. It's like 20 steps and it gets really complicated. So if I can break it down, that's what I like to do. So we're about halfway there. We're at 105. So you can already see that it's really clumping together well. That's what you want. Now, while you're doing this, you wanna make sure you've got a hot water bath. I've got my hot water in this pot right here ready to go. Um, really as hot as you can handle. You want your pot of water as hot as I can handle. I have mine at about 170 degrees right now. And it's, you can see it's really starting to pull together. The curds are really clumping together. And we're just about at 110 degrees. Okay, now I'm gonna drain the whey. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna start squeezing it. You can see there's still a lot of whey in there. 
And when you squeeze it, you'll see in your hands that it starts to become a different texture and it gets much smaller. Now when you feel it start to change a little bit so that it becomes much, oh I don't know, much less, I don't know, it, it, it kind of becomes a little plasticky I guess is what I would describe it. And you can't squeeze too much more whey out of it. Now that's when I'm going to split it into two. So remember I have two gallons. So I'm going to divide it in two. And this is the way I do it. And I, I, like I said, I've played with this for a while to see what works, but this is what works for me. I kind of flatten it so I have a pancake. And so, and then I stick it in my hot water. And the other one's gonna go in there too. And the reason I flatten it is just so that it doesn't take as long to get hot all the way through. The hot water basically um, is helping it get really, really hot and so it gets really kind of gooey and stretchy. Okay, so it's in there. I'm gonna let it sit there for a few minutes. I would say maybe another five to 10 minutes just because you want it to be hot all the way through. And this is when, if you need gloves, you might need to find them. Um, there was a show a while back I used to watch, it was a cooking show, and the girl on it always said, oh, I can touch anything. I have hands like asbestos. Um, I kind of feel like that for myself, so. But if you um, maybe aren't used to working with hot water all the time, maybe you find some rubber gloves. You might need them, because it gets pretty hot. Okay, so it's been sitting for a while, and the cheese should be really hot at this point. I'm gonna move my pot into my sink, because I like to work on, over the sink. Um, first few times I did it over the stove, and I got my stove a mess, so. All right, you're gonna wanna have some kind of a container. Um, I really like these. I got found them at Ikea for a few bucks and they work really well for this. Now, I'm just gonna try to get my little pancake wedges out. You can see it's really, really hot. But look at how it stretches and it does that because it got super hot and melty so at this point I think I'm going to stick that back for just a second just so it gets a little bit hotter I don't want to lose its heat while I'm stretching it so if you need to take smaller amounts to work with maybe try that at first and then I just salt it good this is your only chance to salt it and then just start folding it folding it and stretching it. Just kind of tuck it in around. You're, you're just going to be, it's, I don't know, probably similar to, um, actually probably kneading dough, I would imagine. See how this is kind of breaking away? I'm going to stick that in there longer. It shouldn't really be doing that actually. This one is a lot better. I can tell right away because it's so much hotter to the touch and I can barely grab it. Okay. So 
you just kind of keep doing that and you can see that it's getting to be really kind of satiny which is what you want and then I just fold it hold it into a ball mush up the bottom there's your ball of mozzarella so I'll just stick that in my bowl and do the other one Now, I already salted this one, but I am going to salt it just a little bit more. Zach tends to like salty cheese, plus I had put it back in the water. So when I do that, it rinses off some of the salt that I had already had. Yeah, you can see how all of a sudden this is handling better because it's got hotter again. Okay. So there we go. Now you can see that my first ball is kind of flattened out a little bit. This is what I do. I just clunk them in there side by side. And what they are going to do is just as they get cold, they will solidify even more. But I just put the lid on and it's going to swell a little bit. So I just stick a uh, cast iron pan on top. So I'm just going to let it sit there until it cools off and then I'm going to put it in our cooler. Um, you will put it in your refrigerator. Um, and then as it sits, we will probably eat this for dinner tonight, but as it sits, it will get um, more of that, uh, just a little bit harder maybe, that more of that texture that you're familiar with when you buy mozzarella in the store. Okay, so here's a few moments of honesty. Um, I was a lot intimidated by learning how to do this in the beginning, and I had some failures, which is never really inspiring when you have some failures to tr want to try again, at least for me it's not. But uh, Zach kept pushing me because he really likes the cheese. <laughs> so, But I'm really thankful I sticked with it because, or I stuck with it because it was really, it's really, really good and we all enjoy it. Um, tonight, I think we'll probably end up eating this for dinner, maybe with some crackers. Um, we still have canned peaches left from last summer that we need to use up. So it'll be a really simple dinner, but honestly, I think that when you make something from scratch like this, it can be a simple dinner, but it tastes better and I feel that when you use simple ingredients, yes, it, it takes some more time other than just blind, buying a block of mozzarella at the store, but um, I'm not sure that I would spend any more time on dinner tonight, even with making the cheese myself, than if I had prepared something else because my family enjoys the simple food if, if it's made from scratch. So there's that. Um, I. I think that if we just try something, um, whatever it is, whatever you're interested in, just try it and see if you can do it. Um, this doesn't have to be a really stressful process and I hope this video helped take may, maybe some of the oh, question marks out of cheese making for you. Um, I know once I conquered mozzarella, I thought, okay, cheese isn't that hard, I can do this. You know, not like I had felt about it before. So, hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time on The Homestead.